The Tour de France has been witness to amazing technical innovations over the years. But while bikes have clearly improved in so many ways, there has been no shortage of product failures. And in this video, I'm going to shine a spotlight on five of the worst. Now, it goes without saying that race bikes have been through amazing developments over the last few decades. We've gone from steel race bikes to carbon fiber spaceships with carbon frames, wheels, power meters, electronic and wireless gears, 3D printed saddles, the list goes on and on. The technology has really transformed the Tour de France race bike beyond our wildest imaginations. And before we dive into the first tech failure from Mavic, this video is sponsored by Pedalsure. Pedalsure protects you and your bikes from theft, damage, injury, and much more. Their insurance is trusted by more than 25,000 riders and they're rated excellent on Trustpilot. And you use a link down below to get an instant quote to cover your bike in less than 30 seconds. Right, let's dive in with the first of five tech fails. Before Shimano came along with DI2, Campaign Yellow with EPS and SRAM with ETAP and revolutionized modern road bikes from mechanical gear shifting to electronic and wireless gear shifting, way back in 1992, before many of you watching were born I bet, Mavic came out with the first electronic group set. It was called Zap, but followed in 1999 by Mektronic, which ditched the wires and went fully wireless. And to put in perspective just how far ahead of its time it was, the Apple iPhone wasn't launched until 2007 and DI2 came out from Shimano in 2008, so well ahead of its time. So it sounds amazing right and you wonder why it didn't catch on. Now apparently it was flawed in a number of ways. Apparently the shifting speed was lethargic and because it used radio waves, the shifting could be interrupted by outside influences and even other bikes with the same group set. So your bike, the group set could take a life of its own and change gear of its own accord. Suffice to say, it never caught on. It's more of a case of a technology of the day not being quite where it needed to be for the group set to work properly. In more recent years though, Shimano, Campag and SRAM, as you all know, have absolutely nailed electronic and wire shifting. And these days, the entire Tour de France peloton, all the bikes in the race are using electronic and wire group sets from Shimano, Campag and SRAM and truly the bigger transformation of the modern race bike. But if things had worked out differently for Mavic back in the early 90s, then we might all be using Mavic wireless group sets. But the technology wasn't quite ready then in the way it is now. Aerodynamics is clearly the big trend in the road cycling market these days, and especially in the Tour de France. We've got aero bikes and aero handlebars and aero wheels and aero clothing and helmets. You name it, everything has been aero optimized. And it might seem like a fairly recent trend. But back in the 90s, a small Italian firm was way ahead of its time. The Italian firm in question was Chanelli and introduced its famous Spinacci extension bars, giving rise to use them a very aero position. The 90s really was a crazy era for tech developments in the road cycling world. The rules were fairly relaxed compared to now and definitely being pushed to the limit and produced some amazing bikes during this era of innovation. The idea behind the Spinacci bars was fairly simple. Get a breakaway, get down on the time trial extensions and ride your way to glory. But can you imagine how dangerous it would be if loads of people were using them at the same time in a fast moving peloton? The UCI clearly thought so too and banned them in 1997. Now we're seeing the same debate around aero extension, not in the road cycling market, but over in the gravel world. So what goes around comes around it seems. Another crazy handlebar concept from the 90s that for some reason didn't actually catch on, but not for lack of trying. It was embraced by Greg LeMond, the most famous advocate for aero components, used very well in the 1989 Tour de France, which he won by eight seconds. So the Scott dropping handlebar can't really be called a tech fail because they helped Greg to win the Tour de France, but it definitely fell out of favor. And so in that way, they are a tech fail. Now, what was the Scott dropping handlebar? Basically, a regular drop handlebar with the drops extended to provide another extremely low and extremely narrow position. This allowed a rider using them to get into a super aggressive and very aero position. But for some reason, not enough riders embraced them despite Greg LeMond using them and they fell out of favor. Now, they haven't actually been banned by UCI, so you could rock up to a pro race now, but I'm sure if you did, 
the use IB over their rule book and say you can't use those and find a rule to ban them. Something to do with safety grounds, I'm sure. I can't begin to imagine how sketchy these handlebars must be to use. Put your hands right down on this extension, nowhere near the brake levers, really low and really narrow. The handling must have been pretty alarming at times, so it's no wonder they fell out of favour. Carbon fibre wheels are commonplace in a pro peloton these days, and it's hard to imagine a race without them. And indeed, younger viewers watching this video might know nothing else but a pro peloton full of deep section carbon fibre wheels. But it wasn't always this way. It's fair to say that carbon wheels had a bumpy start before companies nailed the manufacturing to ensure they were safe and didn't fail, which they did on a more regular basis back in the 90s. Because during the 90s, there were some more radical and extreme carbon wheels being developed. Most famous of all were the Spinachi Revex wheels. I remember being a kid and really wanting a pair, but the closest I ever got was seeing photos in a magazine. These Spinachi wheels used eight carbon blade spokes bonded together and were more aero than the metal spoke wheels of the time, and apparently made an amazing whooshing sound, the sound of speed. But of course, you probably know where this is going. The UCI weren't happy on safety grounds. They apparently concerned around the sharp edges of a spokes, cutting your arm or leg off and promptly banned them. And that's the last time we'll ever see radical carbon wheels being used in a Tour de France peloton. The closest we get now is a tri-spoke used in time trial bikes and used sparingly throughout the race. Most carbon wheels now have around a 50mm deep rim with for the most part metal spokes or occasionally carbon fiber spokes but nothing like we had back in the 90s. So Spinachi tried to revolutionize the humble bicycle wheel but ultimately failed. As with wheels, the entire Tour de France peloton used frames made from carbon fiber but alas it wasn't always this way. Materials we all know and love today were put through their paces in the Tour de France. Aluminium and titanium both had brief periods of success, but one material, magnesium, never really caught on fire. Excuse the pun. Yes, that's right, magnesium. The material we all remember from school science being a highly flammable material didn't stop the Kirk Precision arriving full of hope. The I-beam style frame definitely looked funky and radical back in the 90s, but it made the most of one attribute of material and got around one downside. So magnesium is the lightest metal by volume, but it lacks stiffness. So the I-beam style frame gave the frame the necessary stiffness to be a good bicycle frame, but made the most of the lightness of the material. And believe it or not, they were actually used in the Tour de France in 1988 with the Dutch TBM team, including star rider Phil Anderson. But the frames, because they lacked the stiffness, were especially beefed up in key areas to make sure they were stiff enough for these powerful riders. And while the Kirk Precision made it to the Tour de France peloton, the rain was short-lived. They were sadly prone to braking and they weren't actually that lightweight and eventually fell out of favour. So those are some of the biggest tech fails from the Tour de France. And if you want to see just how much a modern road bike has evolved over the last 10 years alone, be sure to check out this video right here where I compare an old and new Candel Super 6 Evo to look at and analyse and compare on the open road the changes over the last 10 years. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all again very soon.